tasked with assembling an elite team to travel through time. All your worlds are about to change. Nick here and welcome back to another Legends of Tomorrow episode of you. My thoughts on tonight's episode of Legends of Tomorrow titled Fail Safe. And this was an episode that I thought wasn't the best episode necessarily, but I thought it was a step up from last week's episode because last week I just felt like there wasn't enough really going on that really kept me interested in the episode. And this episode had, like, had some of those problems from last week that carried over, but there was enough in this episode that kept me interested. I mean, yes, there was... Certain problems I had with the episode as a whole. But I thought it was pretty entertaining. Um, especially that last bit at the end. But I'll get to that a little later. Um, this show is definitely... Some, it's becoming a show that I wasn't necessarily expecting. Because I was expecting, you know, like non-stop action throughout the entire show. Of them trying to stop Vandal Savage. And this show isn't necessarily action-packed... Action-heavy show that I thought it was going to be. And I think that's why, like, for the last couple weeks, I've been a little disappointed because, yes, there's some action and there's some development, but as a whole, these episodes are slow-moving, slow-paced, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. And the show is still kind of, like, it's, it's still a new show. We're only, like, the, it's like, the fifth episode in. And I don't know. I just, like, for the last couple weeks, I just felt like, I don't know what was going on with the show. I really don't know anymore. Uh, but, you know, it is a 13-episode season. Granted, it's not as long as Arrow, and they have all their filler episodes and stuff, or Flash or whatever. But you know what? Like, this show, it's, it's still trying to get its audience in and go, inter like, show us the dynamic of this team and its individual characters, as well as try to further the story of the team trying to stop Vandal Savage. And, of course, they still have, like, another, like, eight episodes to go before, you know, they have to reach that climax. But, you know, this episode, while, again, wasn't the best episode by any means i thought it was definitely a step up from last week and you know it wasn't i don't think it was a bad episode i, I keep feeling like i'm repeating myself but you know what there's again there's enough in it that i i liked and enjoyed especially because i felt like, like this episode i liked it because it felt like a heist episode it also reminded me of that one episode of arrow from season two where they had to break out um i think it was diggle's wife then or before it was, uh john diggle's uh wife from arrow Lila, before they got married, I think she was somewhere in the prison for uh, for Argus, and they had to go to Russia to break her out of this prison. So I felt really re reminiscent of that. Um, and seeing how strong-willed Professor Stein is, and seeing... I, I kind of liked seeing the dynamic of um, Mick and Ray. Um, I've said this before in the last few episodes, Ray is... <sighs> Ray is getting kind of annoying... I really don't know how to feel at this point about the Ray character. Um, it's not Brandon Routh's fault at all. I've always liked Brandon Routh ever since Superman Returns. And I... I, I as the Clark Kent character, like I feel like there's more... He could, I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm straying off the point entirely. But no, I just feel like Ray... Ha, I haven't really... He, he's becoming more of an annoying character than... Really, like, character of depth and character of that's entertaining. Like, I feel like everyone else in the show is really more charismatic. I, mean, I don't know, because I feel like Ray as a character, I'm not saying Brandon Routh, I'm saying Ray as a character tries too hard sometimes. Like, he tries to be the Boy Scout. I mean, they're trying to, like, play that angle because, you know, he did play Superman once. But I don't know, I just feel like, like, the like Ray kind of takes me out of the episode whenever he tries to do, pull, like, that, oh, like, oh, I, I can, like, talk my way out of this when, he, when we all know he can't. Um... But besides that, I, like like I said, I do like the show and work on their dynamics of the team and seeing a little more of Kendra and Jax that we haven't really seen yet and it's finally seeing them step out of the sidelines. Because I feel like they, for the last couple weeks, I feel like it's just been like really, they were getting playing a little too close to the chest and they haven't really like, utilized Hot Girl or Jax as much as I would like them to because Jax and the, their the, his relationship with Stein and them being Firestorm... That's one of my favorite aspects of the show, as well as, you know, um, Captain Golden Heatwave's relationship and Sarah Lance and all the other characters. But Firestorm specifically, he's been a character that I've been really enjoying. I've, I've been, I love seeing. And ever since they introduced him on Flash earlier this or this past year, I just feel like I want to see more Firestorm in action. And granted, they had to do something like show the dynamic outside of each other, even though they're obviously tied to each other. But, um... 
I I do want to see more of Jax's interactions with the rest of the team and not necessarily just like him on the sidelines with Kendra or him on the sidelines with someone else. I want to see him out there with the team, interacting with the team. Um, and this was an episode that, you know, towards the end, like it started to focus more on him and I like seeing that. And in this episode, uh, and Rip is another character that I feel like, I don't know what they're doing with him, like... He may seem like he's really, he's still trying to stop Vandal Savage, but at the same time, he's like throwing his team in these situations. That he doesn't like he doesn't even know what he's doing. Um, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but I do feel like it's just like it's like, dude, like you're, you're sending these people to risk their lives. You know, like I feel like I feel like he has is taking accountability for the actions he makes or he take whatever. Um, and just seeing how it just I just feel like he's not the character I would want him to be. Like, he, he's, he's talking about being this leader and trying, trying to lead the team to stop Vandal Savage when he just, like, he sends, like, half the team out and then, like, oh, it's like, oh, you, like, you, you two just, just stay. Just stay. Like, and yes, there's, like, a whole, oh, like, he doesn't want to risk his uh, friends, or not his friends. He doesn't uh, want to risk any more lives. We get that, but, like, these are heroes who are risking their lives every day, especially, like, in, in this mission. So, I don't know. I just don't. I, it's going to take a little bit to, for, for Rip to grow on me. Um, I feel like I've been a little negative in this review, and I'm sorry if that's the case. Um, I'm because I feel like there's certain like just him, Ray, Rip, and Ray. I just feel like are the two characters that kind of take me out. But seeing everyone else, especially in this episode, we see a little more of the dynamic between um, uh, Snart and uh, White Canary or uh, Sarah. I feel like this show, the one thing it's been succeeding at is working on these dynamics and like. And interacting, having these characters interact when you wouldn't necessarily thought they would have. Like, you wouldn't have thought that, like, I don't know, like, the previous Black Canary interacting with Captain Cold from The Flash. Like, you would have never thought that in a million years, but here it is happening. And they're both on a team working together. And I feel like since this show started, I feel like the characters of Heatwave and Captain Cold have been some of the strongest characters. And seeing their progression, like, they aren't, like, this, like... The stereotypical bad guys, not even necessarily stereotypical, but they aren't necessarily the bad guys that they were on the Flash. I feel like now, like because they're uh, not on their own show, but like because they have a show where they get, have the chance to be more fleshed out, that they're more entertaining to watch, and I like seeing that. And another thing I actually really enjoyed about this episode was seeing a lot more of Vandal Savage and the fact that like we for, it's easy to forget that like all these time jumps, it's dec like a whole decade from the last time they they, they fought Vandal Savage. And he remembers that, and he still has the watch, conveniently. That was uh, Rip Hunter's that had his wife and uh, kid in it. Um, and yeah, just I feel like the Grant Vandal Savage is a villain that, again, another thing that's a slow burn, but he's been growing. Like, that's the thing, that he's been growing on me. Because at first, like, in the Arrow and Flash crossover this, from this past December, I was on the fence about Vandal Savage, and now it's like, you know, like, I, I really like this guy as a villain, and I'm looking forward to what they have in the store for us. Um, but again, overall, this is a really, really... Not the best episode, but it was a solid episode nonetheless. Had its problems, sure, like any show does. And I'm actually really looking forward to the, these next couple of episodes, especially next week's episode. When you know, by the end of this episode, we see the team end up in uh in Star City from the year 20, 2020 or 2046, and we see Green Arrow, and it's not Oliver Queen. And I'm just gonna assume that's Connor Hawk. And obviously, he's played he's played by and Connor. Hawk. I'm assuming it's Connor Hawk, and that's played by an African American actor, which debunks any sort of theories or speculation that the Connor Hawk in this universe is Oliver Queen's son. Um, for those of you who don't know, Connor Hawk is a character in the comics who was Oliver Queen's son who went on to become the second Green Arrow. And in this, and at the end of this episode, we see another Green Arrow, and it's not Oliver Queen, and we can only assume it's Connor Hawk. But I, I guess that's not his son in this continuity, so it doesn't necessarily mean anything about the character. But, I mean, it's a, it's a change of the character that's a little interesting, so I guess we're going to see how that plays out. Especially next week when we see future Oliver finally with his goatee. It looks a little nappy because they released the pictures of it to, uh, earlier today before the episode aired. But, you know, we do see him with with the goatee. Um, and he's, he's supposed to be, like, what, only have one arm, but I see, I've see i seen both arms in the pictures, so unless they added that out with, like, CGI or something. Um, but, yeah, um, I think that's going to be it. So if you guys like what you see here, go ahead and hit subscribe below. Um, I review all these superhero shows every week. I review Flash on Tuesdays, Supergirl on Mondays, Arrow on Wednesdays, and obviously Legend of Tomorrow on Thursdays. And I have upload a bunch of different videos in, in between all that stuff. So, so yeah, that's going to be it for me, guys. So until next time, have a good one.